I'm here with Robert Ettinger from uh, Ettinger London. Uh, Robert, it's lovely to have you here. Good to see you after so long. Well, good morning to you. It's good to be, be on this. Yeah, no, it's great. I, I, um, uh, I, I know that we had a, a kind of date in the diary to see each other. So, you know, obviously what COVID did was get in the way of that. But, you know, we, um, we found ourselves chatting anyway. Um, and for a very good cause, I'm delighted to say, because you have so generously uh, donated a lot to our um, COVID uh, solidarity auction with um, uh, our sister publication, Revolution. And uh, so when you um, uh, tell uh, me and I guess uh, anybody watching a little bit about the lot itself. Well, we're very glad to be part of this auction and we feel very strongly that we should help the countries that are now going into COVID a little bit later than some other countries. And, and we felt we should donate um, a Hurlingham, Ettinger Hurlingham travel bag, which is canvas and leather um, in navy, which will have the recipient's initials embroidered onto the side of the bag. And also because it's very much watch orientated, um, an Ettinger watch roll, which holds two watches of any size, uh, but is yet small enough to put in one's travel luggage and overnight bags. So we thought it was apt to have that item as well as a bag. Terrific, that's great. And um, I, um, uh, I'm interested to know how uh, you as a, as a company have been sort of coping during this very difficult time, because what I've been hearing from a lot of these conversations actually is that um, uh, artisan and craft-based brands like your, yourself um, have actually um, not suffered as badly as a lot of other people because um, factories and so forth have been able to kind of keep ticking over because it's a fairly kind of distant uh, uh, way of working anyway. Yes, I mean, we did initially close for a few weeks. I think it was because people wanted to, they were worried about the whole thing. They were frightened as we all were. And we just wanted to get control and understand how we could start working in, in our factory. What's interesting, our factory was built in 1890 as a leather factory. Um, so it's lots of very long rooms with lots of natural light, which in those days they needed because there was no electric light and lots of nooks and crannies. And two years ago, we were going to move everybody into a purpose built open plan factory. Mm -hmm. And in hindsight, I'm glad we didn't because now we are back very much so. And we've got lots of areas that we can separate people. We can have three or four in one area one room and a dozen in one of the larger rooms and it's working for us good um, so that's a bit of luck in a way because if you have an open plan factory and it's full of people you can't operate in the same way um, and it means reducing the number of people or, or having some people coming in someday and not others but for us it's, it's really working we're back manufacturing and and things are starting to pick up i mean it's, it's way far from normal but we're confident and, and being a global brand, we're finding the Far East, China and Korea and Japan are open again and are, are, are selling and the retailers are doing quite well. Fantastic. Well, it's lovely to hear and I'm and glad as, you, as, as we were discussing earlier that um, uh, orders for sort of through the rake are also coming through, which is really nice because, uh, you know, we, we've worked together for a long time now and it's, it's good to know that uh, there's sort of uh, mutual support there. Um, and, uh, you know, long may that last. Um, and can you just tell me perhaps why it is that you sort of wanted to get involved with um, this charity auction with the Rake um, and Revolution? Uh, just, just, you know, because um, it's interesting to know where people's, um, uh, uh, you know, where people are putting their um, ability to help um, and their focus for that. Yes, I think what we felt is, is the auction is raising money for countries that are going into COVID later than some of the European countries. And, and we've gained a lot of insight, our doctors and our surgeons, into how to treat it. Um, and I think sharing this information with them uh, and helping them through the auction is going to make a big difference in people's livelihoods and people's lives. Um, I, I know I was speaking to some friends who, who are doctors on the front line, and they say the difference between middle of March and now in how they understand how to treat people is enormous. And at times they were going home in the early days wondering if they'd made the right decision of what to do with people, whereas now they have answers. 
Um, and although we haven't got a vaccine yet, this is making a big difference to people in people's lives. Great, and I'm glad that we can kind of do our bit and do what we can to kind of sort of keep helping out and hopefully um, other countries who, who, who don't necessarily have the infrastructure that we are lucky to have um, can um, benefit from it. Um, Robert, thank you so much again. Uh, it's mighty right. generous of you to be involved and um, I'm uh, excited to see uh, what happens uh, during the week and when, when it actually all goes live. So um, thank you again and um, we will uh, we'll be speaking soon. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Tom.